Okay, guys. Hello. Welcome to my presentation. Um, it's called Daily Grind and Extra Learning Blend, uh, my everyday 3D routine. Why grind? Because my, peop my uh, friends are telling me all the time that I'm grinding every day. And why blend? Because it's Blender and it's like, yeah, pun totally intended. Uh, and I just wanted to tell you about uh, how I'm using Blender every day for nine years, and I probably I won't rein reinvent the wheel today. You probably know all this stuff, but still I just want to share what I'm doing every day. Um, I will just cover the few steps that I'm doing every every single day, and then wrap it up with like some uh, like motivational talk maybe a little bit, but uh, like from getting started to booking out, modeling, sculpting, texturing, shading, setting up the scene, post processing, and then just receiving the price, well-deserved price most of the times. And that's all my works. And uh, I'll be talking about those four projects of mine. The two uh, on the, uh, it's for you, it's for, it's in the top. Uh, it's the project by um, Justin Gerard and uh, the car is, uh, the, the original concept is by Alejandro Bordigio. So I'm really thankful for them to uh, allowing me to use their concepts. And the two, the carousel and the, uh, and the, uh, phone is just my own ideas that I just made for a portfolio and just pure for pure, pure fun. Pure is about me. I'm Eva wierbik -Ziomka. I'm from Poland. Uh, I'm in the industry for over nine years right now. Uh, I'm a self-taught artist. I was studying biomedical engineering, so that's like t something totally different. Uh, I worked in a few studios. I worked for movies, for games, for a lot of different uh, clients, uh, but uh, this year I started my own 3D company. Uh, it's called 3D Creations, and I'm just starting, getting started. So I'm really enjoying my works, and I'm like happier every day that I can do what I what I really really love. You can find more projects on my art station, which you can scan later in the QR code and at the end. But I just uh, cho I've chose the four projects that I already made like breakdowns uh, of because people were really enjoying it and I had a really positive feedback. So yeah, we are getting started. We are not in Blender yet, but we are fighting the concept art and I'm always looking for my concept art, for the concept art or ideas for my renders uh, on ArtStation or on different like social media for the people I know or I don't know. And uh, I just wanted to share also like a few tips and tricks that I've learned throughout the, uh, my career that you always need to ask uh, to, for permission to uh, use someone else's work because that's always better to, to like not steal technically. And you have, you can have a light, little like conversation with the artist, so that's super, super, super cool. Uh, and obviously, you can di like directly import uh, some blueprints to Blender, so that's kind of like having references in Blender too. And I'm using a lot of references, as you can see on my boards, so that's like packed with all of the elements that I'm going to be modeling. So that's a good tip to have a lot of a lot of references, even if you know what you're doing. I know what you're doing because we all know what we're doing. But still, even if you're making stylized stuff, just use reference real references because it really, 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 really help helps. Uh, and blocking out the next step, we are finally in Blender. On the top, you can see probably the most advanced blockout you've ever seen, the, block, the box blockout of a box. Yeah, right, that's, that's super, super, super complicated. Uh, I'm always trying to do blocking because I like to know uh, the sizes of my objects, the overall proportions, and that's what I'm doing. Basically, just use the biggest objects that you have on your, ob uh, on your like, that what you want to model. And then you just need any uh, kind of uh, modifiers or stuff, just do, Rough block out, so you can see very advanced one, just a box with a proper sizes, and that's that's really all. Uh, then we're coming to modeling, sculpting. Uh, in the video below, you can see my amazing skills of sculpting, very very like subtle details. You can't even really see them that much, like little dents in the in the in the in the legs of the on the of the phone. Um, at this step, I'm just trying to add a little bit of bevels. You can go with like everything you want, really. You can go poly modeling, you can do hard surface, you can do sculpting. I'm like combining it all together. It depends on the project that I'm making. For example, for the for the peanut, for the character, I just like sculpted everything. And for the for the um, for the phone, I just used a hard surface stuff and just a little bit of sculpting. 
And so most of my models are mid-poly. I'm not doing that low-poly models because I just don't like optimize stuff that much. I optimized a lot of things in my previous uh, job, so I was like, okay, for my own stuff, I'm just not going to do it. Uh, but I'm just using a lot of modifiers all this at this step, but I'm not uh, really accepting them right now because I want to have more control later before like unwrapping. And um, yeah, the next step, um, I mean, you can see also like the pretty renders, ambient occlusion renders, everyone loves them. And the car being made, uh, like, it wasn't a blockout, it was just like uh, some kind of like middle stage of, of, of being done. And uh, also, when you're sculpting, when I'm sculpting, I'm always trying to add a lot of detail in the elements that are visible, and some of them are not visible, so I'm not just paying attention. So you can see the hand that the arm is like pretty, like, mm, yeah, you can see the polygons, but on the uh, nails and hand, it's like pretty, pretty detailed. And also the carousel, like from just like overall look to the finished sculpt with everything nicely set up. And obviously, ambient occlusion render because it just looks cool. Then um, we have high poly, low poly. That's actually something what is pretty interesting to talk about. I don't really think that there is a way to do it. You just you know, you just approach it as you as you need it. So I'm just trying to depends on the project. I, I'm just trying to um, I'm just trying to uh, do a mid poly model, then like copy this model and sculpt on it, and then probably use the already made uh, like mid poly model to just like shrink wrap out over it. But sometimes it's just like not possible. So I'm doing my retopos mostly by hand. I'm not using any like fancy uh, add-ons for it. Sometimes, uh, obviously, when I have a client work and the deadline is for yesterday, I'm using automatic tools to just like speed up the workflow, but it's actually not super working really well because then you need to place the seams. And it's really, really difficult when it's just automated. But most of the times, uh, it's really good to remember that the mesh should be really nice and clean. That's what I'm trying to do most of the times. But as you can see on the skulls, it's not super perfect. But still, it works. So uh, we all know how mesh looks sometimes, right? And it's really difficult to, to keep it re looking really, really nice. And then the next step, what I want to focus a little bit more, because actually, it's unwrapping, uh, which I love. I love to do unwrapping, and people hate it. I don't know why. It's really, really weird. That's super like relaxing for me. Um, a few tips here is just like it. It also depends on the approach. Obviously, if you have hard surface, you need to place the sims on the hard edges. If you have organic, you just need to organic model. You just need to hide it. Like fun fact is that my friends are actually calling me a UV queen because I'm just love unwrapping, and that's like super crazy. But um, I'm using, obviously, some add-ons to help me, Zen UV and UV Packmaster, to just pack all of these UVs because it wouldn't be possible by hand. That's just too much. And you can see for this like little guy, I have 10 sets of textures. It was actually 11, but I didn't include this one because it didn't fit the, the image. Uh, and I came up with an idea to do some funny 3D art stuff, uh, 3D like UV art stuff, because when I was unwrapping the stuff for uh, for the uh, King Combi car, the, the the car that I made, I just saw like very f nice and funny, funny uh, UVs that I created actually uh, by accident, to be honest, and I just decided to post it online, and people were like, "Wow, that's funny." Yeah, maybe I will like unwrapping at the end, but I was like, "Yeah." Maybe. And my favorite is like this little bit messy UV because that was like a simple screw. Nothing, like not a big deal, but it was just like, like this. And I was like, that's a true work of art. That's beautiful. Uh, yeah, and the next step, it's texturing. I'm not actually using Blender for texturing that much. That's the only step that I'm using something different. So I'm using Painter, obviously. And you can see the super fancy setup uh, for exporting my textures on the top. It's like um, it's a lot of textures. I'm not always exporting all of them because I obviously I don't need like a sheen or like clear coat for, for example, for this uh, for this uh, little horse on the carousel. But I'm just like having everything, and I'm just exporting what I need. So that's like super convenient. Um, below you can see a uh, little like build up of the material that I'm doing uh, most of the time. So just like 
like sculpting, basically. So you start with the base and then you're adding details and adding details until like someone t is telling you that, okay, you need to stop because that's, that's, that's too much and it's taking way, way too long. And uh, yeah, and uh, sometimes actually for, for this product, for Carousel, I just wanted, really wanted to show you that because I used both like uh, painting textures, so PBR and uh, Substance Painter, and also procedural uh, library, so it's like Sanctus library that I used. And you can see that the pole of the horse and like the base of the pole is made in like procedurally and the rest is uh, painted. So you can even see the difference and it looks good. So I'm like combining it together sometimes. And also when I'm working for clients, it's not always that much time to really paint textures. So I'm just like, you know, just using the external libraries. It just works, works really fine. So you can do it too. You can mix them. The next step is exporting everything to Blender again. Obviously, like the simplest one, the pre simple shader, it always works. Uh, don't judge me to make my renders look better. I'm mixing uh, ambient occlusion with my diffuse or base map, uh, base color. It just looks good. No one ever told anything about it. So I'm like, okay, like, yeah, it looks good. So I'm going to use it. Uh, obviously, I'm using Node Wrangler. That's the huge time saver because you can export all textures at once. Um, and sometimes also I'm using a note, but GeoNotes for creating really simple um, wireframes because I'm not an expert in Geo so I just can do like a little really uh, simple stuff. So you can see the really simple wireframe there. And uh, sometimes I'm also uh, doing my own shaders, for example, for this volumetric thing. It's really simple setup, but it looks cool and it works. And it's like pretty efficient because it's not like a huge volume. It's just like a gradient with some Voronoi and Musgrave textures, so that's like perfect, works perf perfectly fine and it looks really, really uh, nice. And uh, then, uh, obviously, I'm thinking about composition a little bit like before all of these steps because most of my scenes are pretty simple. I'm not trying to make like super complicated scenes. I'm doing like just presentation of the asset or like the character like this. So my scenes aren't that super complicated. Uh, and I'm thinking about composition and my cameras a little bit before that. So I'm just like have a rough blackout and then I'm probably like setting the, uh, setting the cameras. But I'm always doing that. But I'm sometimes doing that a little bit later too. So. Um, uh, for bigger scenes that I'm sometimes doing too, especially for the carousel one uh, that you're going to see animation of in a bit. Um, I'm just uh, using external libraries to, to, to have my objects too, so I'm not modeling everything because I was like always modeling everything by myself and that just took too much time. So I was like, okay, I guess I need to, I guess I need to um, use external libraries too. And it's a time that I'm always, uh, that's, uh, that's a time that I'm uh, starting to mess with lights too. So I'm usually using just some area lights, um, sun lamps, uh, HDRIs, and some mesh lights. It's not a big deal. It's like very simple, as you can see on the car. It's just like the mesh light around uh, another one on the top and just a few lights uh, like next to the, next to the car uh, and a few cameras from different angles. And that's not a big deal. That's just like a very, very simple scene. And um, with the rendering settings that I'm using, it's always different uh, like for every project. But basically, I'm trying not to overkill my computer with the number of samples because it's not the newest one. So I'm always trying to optimize everything. But with the settings for like volumetrics or uh, volumetrics or like the transparency. I'm just trying to adjust it to, for my needs. So I'm trying them relatively, uh, relatively low to make just like the render go faster a little bit. And then I'm doing post-processing of my work. So you can see the, the, the whole process of creating the, the, the little dude. Um, it's kind of like really nice to see how it all comes together. And um, I'm using Photographer Adam both for lights and also for, uh, for post-processing. 
but you don't need to really use any other programs like Photoshop. You can do everything in Compositor and Blender. <clears throat> That's what I'm usually doing, but sometimes I just want to uh, make them look a little bit better even better in uh, Camaro, but that's not super necessary. You can just <clears throat> do whatever you want in, in Blender because it's all possible. And you can also uh, bake some nice AO, like ambient occlusion of volumetrics, and then just like combine them all together in Compositor and just looks perfect and very, very nice. And then uh, I guess it's just like the last step. So we are posting everything on the internet but I'm always struggling with like the, the, um, the feedback from people because I'm always uh, scared that I'm not doing enough. It's not good enough to show, but my friends are telling me like, come on, you need to post it because it's like already like five months of doing one project. And I'm like, okay, yeah, yeah, that's true. That's, that's true. Yeah, I should post it. And I'm just trying to give myself time to uh, like really understand that, okay, it's, it's good enough and I need to post it. Uh, and that's, for beginners and pro, uh, pros, both. So we can just give myself uh, ourselves time because it takes time to to make everything looks really nice. But if you can do something, and I'm sometimes like I'm, I'm being stuck uh, in the project and I have no idea what to do. I'm just leaving things for now, starting something different, and then coming back again to to it. And like with a fresh mindset, I'm like, okay, I can do it now. Uh, and what helped me very, very much was joining a lot of communities on Discord and actually asking for feedback, uh, like Blender community, basically. And it helped, like, it helped a lot because people were giving me such a nice feedback that you really should do it too if you're like, struggling with uh, similar things. Uh, and yeah, remember that everything takes time and do not give up because you can see this project here. I was really hoping that I will finish the animation of the car because it had to be like super fancy animation, like almost commercial, but I didn't make it in time, but I will make it maybe next year. We'll see. Maybe we'll, we'll see, but I prepared like three short animations about the projects that I showed you before and I hope you will enjoy it. So maybe watch them now. Yeah. So thank you very much for coming. I'm sorry for being like so stressed because I was stressing out for the whole week, but finally it's done. And if you want, you can find more information about me by scanning this QR code. And feel free to come say hi. I'll be very, very happy to meet you. Yeah, thank you once again. Thank you for coming. <laughs>